Today we're excited to welcome someone who literally goes the distance. LV Guzman joins us to talk about founding the fastest growing urban obstacle race in the country and raising over $1 million for charity. This is School of Hustle, the show where we find advice and inspiration from people who are making their own way. I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and I live and breathe the hustle of business. Today we're filming from the hustle of it all at the WeWork Times Square in New York City. Everybody, let's give Elvie the biggest, warmest welcome. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. You are going the distance 23 times now at three and a half miles each. What is the city challenge? It's an urban obstacle course that uh, allows our participants to conquer their challenges over 25 obstacles over three miles, including walls, cargo nets, and fun obstacles that people get to experience over and over. Now I've heard of um, like a 5K or a Spartan race, but you're different. Significantly, yes. Yeah, yeah so, how so? Well, when, when you compare us to a 5K, um, a 5K is just running 3.1 miles. On our course, you have 3.1 miles plus 25 obstacles. So it's a lot more ch challenging, a lot more intense, um, a lot more fun, I think. Uh, when you compare us to a Spartan race, there's mud, there's um, different types of, of terrain and at a Spartan race. Um, at our race, it's more urban, so you get to run on asphalt, you get to jump over cop cars and taxi cabs, which is unique to our events. You, you know, you really get to feel like um, a Superman or a Superwoman when you do our obstacles. And probably less blood than those barbed wires and things that I've seen in other photos from Spartan races and things like that. Yeah, so we don't have barbed wire or electrocution like some races do. <laughs> you don't torture people. <laughs> we, we don't torture them to that degree, but we definitely um, put them through, um, through a test uh, of, of, of both will and um, fitness. It's got to be as much mental as it is physical. I would say that the mental component is probably 90% of it. Really? Yeah. That high? 90%, yeah. Okay, why is it? That surprises me. Well, because when, you know, like life, when you come through obstacles and different cha uh, different challenges, um, you know, you, you have an, uh, an opportunity to either go above and beyond and c conquer those obstacles, or you can turn around and quit, right? Yeah. So at our races, when you get tired, when you get to a wall that's eight foot tall, and you're five foot nothing, um, you have the opportunity to turn around and go home, or you have the opportunity to actually face your fears and, and jump over it, climb over it, get on someone's back, and just make sure that, that you get it done, right? And in, in the spirit of getting it done, you have some medals here that you yeah. brought today. Yeah, so this is um, our first medal in 2013 was a bottle opener. Um, we thought it would be a great marketing idea to give people bottle openers so that when they're entertaining guests, they can use it over and over again. And people will ask, hey, what's that city challenge race? You know, and it worked out well yeah. for the first year. And what goes into the artwork? So this medal is from 2015. And this medal has a really cool saying in the back, um, champions aren't made in the gyms. Champions are made from something they have deep inside them, a desire, a dream, a vision. There's a quote from Muhammad Ali something that people can take home with them after the race and show off to their friends and family. Philanthropy mm -hmm. is just as important to you as fitness. Absolutely. And you have found a way to merge yeah. philanthropy and fitness into the City Challenge. Yeah. How have you done that? What does your charitable component really look like in all Absolutely. of this? So one of our main goals when we created a City Challenge race in 2013, my sister was diagnosed with breast cancer at the time. So I wanted to create an event that raised funds and awareness for breast cancer. So that year we partnered with Susan G. Coleman and we raised money for that cause. Um, ever since then we've partnered with different charities uh, including the Warrior Project for veterans, and kids with cancer, big brothers and big sisters, and different groups including the Hoboken Shelter. So I think it's it's important that when you're su successful that you give back to the to the to the community that has embraced you and that has allowed you to grow and be a successful company. And you've given back over $1 million. Over uh, $1 million through our races, through our events, um, either through fundraising or just checks that, that we've written to these groups. That's an amazing accomplishment. And yeah. all of those groups are fabulous organizations. Thank you. Um, how do you identify the charities that you'll support? Well, um, a lot of these charities, some are local that, that we see in our hometown, which is Hoboken and Hudson County. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so a lot of those are local groups that I see that, that have a need for, for funds and for awareness. Other groups um, are groups that, that search us and we re review and we interview and we look at um, if, you know, if they're a good fit for us. Um, Wounded Warriors um, also um, Operation Enduring Warrior is a, are, are groups that be great for our veterans. Um, and our veterans are, are, are a group that I think um, are, being, um, are not being taken care of as, as much as they should. So any kind of awareness or funds that we, that we can raise towards those groups is, is I, I think is a great thing. Well, I've heard you say that the only way to succeed is to run your own company. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit more about what you mean by that? I believe that when you work for yourself and you're doing things that you're passionate about, you're going to be happy, you're going to do great at, at it because it's, it's what you believe in and what you're passionate about, right? Um, I also believe that when you work for yourself, you have um, a more significant um, goal to like strive for versus working for someone else, right? Um, in corporate America and in different groups, people are fired and they're let go every day. Um, and they're working for, for um, companies that don't appreciate them as, as much as they, as they should. When is your next course and how can people yeah. get involved? We have a uh, New York City Challenge Race on August 17th. I have to ask you, what goes into closing streets in New York City and Stanford? I mean, how do you pull off taking over a city? Well, it's interesting, right? Um, Staff Connecticut actually reached out to us and wanted us to, to come there and to bring this event in promotion of health and fitness and to get more people involved in that community um, to be part of um, this event. Our event in New York City has been going on now for six years. So it's kind of turnkey now. Um, but first year is definitely difficult um, trying to get permits and getting people on board to be able to close the streets off. Thank you for sharing all of that. Absolutely. We're going to now spice things up and play a game that we call Hustle Time. What we are going to do is set a timer for 60 seconds yeah. and see how many cards you can get through in that time. Okay? In 60 seconds? In 60 seconds. With my stutter, it'll probably be one. I'm going to try to read as fast as I can. Vacation, lounge on the beach or an active hike? Beach. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Favorite movie theater treat? Uh, popcorn. Sashimi or rolls? Both. Would you rather never get angry or never be envious? Mm, both. Go to karaoke song? Uh, Whitney Houston or anything. Yes or no, socks with sandals? No. Most irrational fear? Brownie. Wine, white or red? Neither. No cheese ever again or no sugar ever again? No cheese. Describe yourself in three words. Uh, rockstar, superstar, LV. Surf's up or cocktails poolside? Surf's up. Least favorite candy? None, I, I like them all. Saturday morning cartoons or a late night TV? Late night TV. Drive yourself or call a car service? Drive myself. Summer or winter? Summer. Favorite breakfast cereal? None. Favorite Jennifer Lopez movie? All of them. How would your mother describe you? Uh, nice. Who is someone that defines success to you? My dad. Oh! <laughs> nicely done! Let's see what you got. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Is that good? Nicely done. Uh, That's really good. Nice job. Average, uh, average? A lot of people get between 13 and 16. All right, I beat that. Like you're, yeah. Very That's great. Guys. Favorite part of your day? Mornings. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Uh, always do the right thing. Worst piece of advice? Uh, take breaks. How do you use your career to inspire others? Just by leading by example and just yeah, doing what, it's, what I'm supposed to do. Ever felt like walking away? Yes, all the time. One thing you still need to learn? A lot of things. What do you want people to learn from you? That hard work pays off. What's next for you? Working hard and just uh, trying to achieve as many goals as I can. Who inspires you? My mom and dad. Who challenges you? Myself. Well, this last piece of advice is not only for our favorite resident pug today, but for two new cute friends. Who, who did you bring with you today, So Ellie? these are my kids, this is Amigo and Cooper. They're 10 weeks old. Well, thank you for bringing them on. Now we have, we have three pups here to get this advice today. Now, now here's the question. 
Noodle is always up for a physical challenge. Mm -hmm. He's a fairly strong runner, but he lacks upper body strength mm. on the mon monkey bars, okay? Yeah. What advice do you have for Noodle as he considers participating in a city challenge race? So one of the important things is um, endurance, right? So I think that um, endurance is um, key, make, making sure that, that you have enough energy and, and stamina. And for gr grip strength, I suggest uh, pull-ups or um, dumbbells. Um, also, if, if you have a team, like we hope GoDaddy will bring a team, you can help yourself over the obstacles. That promotes team building and camaraderie, of course. So you hear that, Noodle? Running is not enough. You gotta work on uh, the upper body exercises and find a team. Maybe the three of you can all join together. I'm sure they can. Well, as we close, I always like to leave everybody with a final quote. And I'm gonna read um, three quotes and ask you, Elby, to pick your favorite one and tell me why. Number one, leaders are never satisfied. They continually strive to be better. Number two, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Three, limit your always and your nevers. Number two, because you don't have to be great to start. I, I'm not great, I'm, I'm, I'm just a hard working guy, average guy, right? Yeah. And uh, I feel like we're on the way to doing some great things. You know, we've been able to raise funds for a lot of charities. We've, we've had over 20,000 athletes run through our yeah. courses. And um, had I waited to be great, it probably would have never happened. Thank you for that. I really had fun talking to you today. I did too. Thank you for bringing your babies. I would like for you to tell everybody watching how they can follow City Challenge Race on social. Sure. So we're on Instagram, City Challenge Race. Uh, we're on Facebook. And we're also, of course, our website is uh, citychallengerace.com. Great. So for you guys to have access to the World Wide Web, <laughs> go to www.citychallengerace.com. And please also follow GoDaddy across social because we are bringing fabulous entrepreneurs like Elvie every week. So there's a lot of inspiration and advice to be had. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Thank you.